Good evening and welcome to the Superintendent Contract Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee. Uh, today is uh, November 16th, uh, 2021. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, presentation of the Superintendent uh, end of cycle evaluation and then any other business to come before this subcommittee. Um, so um, uh, if uh, it's all right, I'll go ahead and get started with the presentation of the Superintendent's evaluation. Yes. Yeah, we're getting we're getting high tech here. <laughs> Get that out of the way because I tend to trip over things. Okay. So we'll start off in just a minute with uh, uh, just a high level overview of the process. Again, I know that the committee is familiar with it as we're uh, a key part of it, um, but just for the public's knowledge of of how that works, the the committee um, by contract is required to do an evaluation of the superintendent um, every year and I'll, I'll show you the the criteria that's that's laid out by Desi in a second um, and then so we do that that um, evaluation each member of the committee submits their their comments and their scoring um, and then that gets put into this presentation and the scores um, get accumulated into um, basically a factor that um, ends up working out to um, a uh, pay increase um, for the superintendent as is dictated by the contract. So, um, all right. Mm. Oh, wait, okay. Wait a minute. All right, good, all right, I think we're okay now. Um, so these are the, this is the, the general process here. The, super, the superintendent is evaluated on progress towards achievement of the goals. We have the student learning goal, professional practice goals, and then there are two to four district improvement goals. Um, and then uh, performance on each of the standards is in the DESE's superintendent and district administrator rubric, which is I'm gonna show next. Um, and then the, let's see, has this got a pointer on it? Perfect. So then over here, this is just kind of the cycle of, of how the process works. There's self-assessment, analysis, goal setting, plan development, implementation, there's a mid-cycle review, and then this is the end of cycle evaluation. <clears throat> um, again, this is the superintendent uh, rubric. Um, so there's, we'll go through each standard um, and, and what the comments and feedback from the committee was. Um, and then within there um, are different goals within those standards. Um, so again, the evaluation process is the review of the goals. The superintendent uh, a few months back presented evidence and then made that evidence available um, electronically through teams for the committee's review. Um, we evaluated the evidence and then now here today is the presentation of ratings and feedback. <clears throat> All right, so ensure students and their teachers have access to high quality Research-based instructional resource across all content areas. Uh, resources must support a shift from remote to hybrid teaching and learning, um, culminating in a transition back into in-person teaching and learning. Again, you know, it's been this interesting time of COVID where we've had to shift into different modes of learning. Um, and with this goal, um, we have, uh, this is connected to the following standards within the rubric. Um, standard one is the instructional leadership. Standard two, management and operations. Uh, standard three, family and community engagement. And then standard four is the professional culture part of it. Um, and again, I don't wanna just stand here and read the entire slide to you, but the, the, the summary um, on the instructional leadership, right? Educational leader promotes the learning growth of all students, success of staff, cultivating a shared vision, uh, that makes powerful teaching and learning the central focus. Um, and standard two, promotes the learning and growth of all students, success of all staff by ensuring safe, efficient, um, effective learning environment, using resources to implement appropriate curriculum, staffing, scheduling. Um, standard three, promote the learning and growth of all students, success of staff, um, effective partnerships with families, community organizations, other stakeholders that support the mission of the district. 
And finally, standard four promote the success, promotes success for all students by nurturing and sustaining a school culture uh, of reflective practice, high expectations, and continuing learning for staff. Okay, so um, on the first one, ensure students and their teachers have access to high quality research-based instructional resources across all content areas. <clears throat> um, these resources must support a shift from remote to hybrid teaching to, and learning to uh, culminate into a transition to in-person teaching and learning. So um, the overall rating from the committee was that the superintendent met this goal. And then some of the comment from the committee, students were not able to attend in person because of the global pandemic. The district was able to implement remote learning very quickly for all students in grades kindergarten through 12. This remote model switched to a hybrid model and then finally back to in person. There was a lot of communication within the community and teachers through this process. Another committee member commented, uh, Superintendent Thomas definitely creates a shared vision with the BPS educators that allows for high quality instruction for the students. For the professional practice goal, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and so again, we talked, we looked at this earlier, build a, a collaborative pro, uh, professional culture in which all stakeholders are invested in a shared vision that prioritizes student academic success and social and emotional wellness. All right. Um, and on this pr uh, professional practice goal, uh, the rating was that the superintendent met this goal. And uh, I've uh, got a couple of comments from the committee. Um, the superintendent is a particularly good listener and communicator. The district is invested in the student's social and emotional wellness. Several school adjustment counselors have been added to this year's budget and more will be added to next year's budget because, of funds, because funds allow it. And the superintendent Thomas understands the need to support the whole child. Uh, another comment, the district is also working with DESE on turnaround practices that will help close achievement gaps and target students with the greatest need. And finally, Mike certainly met this goal. More than ever, the professional culture and collaboration of all stakeholders came through. The commitment to student success and social emotional wellness in the district showed probably more than ever during these unprecedented times. Okay, so um, review the, uh, the organizational culture and climate in the Brockton Public Schools and its impact on instructional environment. So on culture and context, the uh, score the committee gave was that the superintendent met this goal. Um, and comment from the committee, the superintendent implemented a two-part training on equity and diversity in curriculum materials and instructional practices. This training helps to increase cultural proficiency among staff and prepares them to meet the needs of our diverse learners. Another comment, Superintendent Thomas fosters a beneficial climate and culture within the Brockton Public Schools as is evidenced by his leadership, open communication, and ability to collaborate with others internally and externally. And again, the superintendent met this goal. Next, we have ensures organizational efficiency and effectiveness to streamline operations and support all schools. Excuse me one minute. <clears throat> All right. So on this goal, some progress was made here. The superintendent made the changes he could within the restrictions brought on by the pandemic. I'm confident the FY22 budget, or I'm sorry, I'm confident in the F, it should say in, in the FY22 budget we have passed um, will help the superintendent make significant progress in the coming year. Um, the superintendent is committed to operating a BPS transportation department that will save millions of dollars on buses, allowing us to do more in the way of field trips and transportation of our students for academic and music program events. On this goal, the committee gave the superintendent an overall score that said that he met this goal. On operations and finance, strengthen operations and finance effectiveness. Um, 
fiscal, human resources, facilities, uh, communications, transportation, and information technology. <clears throat> okay, and the committee said that the uh, superintendent met this goal as well. Uh, and some of the comment from the committee, the superintendent and this committee had been anticipating the Student Opportunity Act or SOA funds prior to the pandemic. Not only did the SOA funding get delayed a year, but the rest of our budget was in question as well. The district had to prepare three learning models in response to the pandemic, hybrid, remote, or full in-person learning. This meant resources had to be acquired and prepared for all three scenarios, and staff had to be trained. Additionally, there was a lot of moving parts. The superintendent led the district through all of this, adjusting plans as needed. All right, on instructional leadership, the, educa the education leader promotes the learning and growth of all students. Hold on a second. Who has a, um, a Prius out there? Um, your lights are on inside there. All your lights are on inside it. So I don't want your battery to go. Ooh, that would not be. Continue, sorry. To <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That was important. <laughs> um, all right, so. The education leader promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff by cultivating a shared vision that makes powerful teaching and learning the central focus of schooling. The committee gave the superintendent a score of proficient on this topic, on this, this uh, area, on this standard rather. Um, superintendent Thomas has used his years of being a Brockton Public Schools employee to his advantage. He gets it. He understands what being an educator is all about. He is always willing to work with others to create a focus on beneficial educational efforts. Um, standard two within management and operations promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff by ensuring a safe, efficient, effective learning environment using resources to implement appropriate curriculum staffing and scheduling. Uh, the committee um, gave the superintendent a score of proficient on this standard and one of the comments was the superintendent and his team including the school committee understands the need to enhance the growth opportunities and ability to foster success within the public Brockton public schools as is evidenced by entering into a memorandum of understanding with the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education this realization and understanding is helping to charter a new beneficial course for students and staff. All right, standard three promotes the uh, learning and growth of all students and success of all staff through effective partnerships with families, community organizations, and other stakeholders that support the mission of the school and district. And the committee uh, on this standard gave the superintendent a score of proficient. Uh, one member commented, the student, along with the communication director, work together to report the most up-to-date information to the committee about school happenings using surveys, regular emails, calls to homes, and meetings. Another comment, the superintendent has greatly improved the family and community engagement in the district. He has several groups he meets with regularly to gain input on various areas of concern. Mike truly has an open-door policy for community members and staff. Standard four, uh, promotes success of, for all students by nurturing and sustaining a school culture of reflective practice, high expectations, and continuous learning for staff. The committee gave the superintendent a score of proficient on this standard. And one of the comments, Mike Thomas promotes, su promotes success via beneficial attitude and culture for all within the Brockton Public Schools for all students and employees. He's a true professional and a role model for others. Uh, another comment, the district has continuous learning for all staff and is provided through on, ongoing professional development. Um, so the overall rating, this is an overall rating of the superintendent's performance taking into account all evidence presented for the goals and performance standards. <clears throat> and the overall rating that the committee gave the superintendent was proficient. Um, the superintendent's lead, and the, these are some of the comments from the committee, the superintendent's leadership during this pandemic has been outstanding without question. 
from negotiations with every bargaining unit as conditions changed to rolling out remote learning, being able to make good decisions under pressure, Superintendent Thomas has navigated and led the district through this unprecedented time. Another committee member said this past year showed Mike's natural leadership abilities more than I think we normally would have seen. He led in a way you would expect a seasoned superintendent would lead. Another comment, I truly believe that BPS is fortunate to have Mike Thomas as the superintendent. He is a product of BPS and he has been a dedicated employee within the system for decades. I have had the distinct opportunity to work with him on a daily basis. His drive and determination to create a positive and, reward, and rewarding opportunities is exceptional. And finally, the future of BPS is great due in large, in large part to Mike's leadership and his collaboration with others both in and out of the system. All right, so that's the end of cycle review and the next steps um, just to finish up. Um, so um, there's the mid-cycle review, um, which will happen in January. Um, and at that point, the superintendent analyzes the data and evidence collected up to that point. Um, and the evaluation cycle prepares his assessment of progress on each of the goals in the superintendent's annual plan. Um, the assessment of progress is presented to the school committee as an agenda item at a regularly scheduled meeting of the school committee. And then the superintendent and the school committee review and discuss the report and evidence. Uh, this will take place during the same meeting at which the superintendent presents um, his or her assessment of progress. You might remember a few months back we started this current process with this. Um, and then they'll be sharing relevant feedback. Uh, develop a clear understanding of the process being, um, being made on each goal, and then achieve an agreement on what, if any, mid-course adjustments might need to be made. Any questions? All right. All right, so that's it for the PowerPoint. Thank you. Um... Thank you. Okay, so the next and final part of this, everybody should have, does everybody have this document? Um, so this is the uh, end of cycle summative evaluation report. Um, and this is kind of the p compiling of all of the scores that we gave, uh, the number scores. And um, you have the, within this, I mean, you have the summary on top, but within this, you actually have the data from each, each uh, standard, um, and it all works out to a score or an average of 3.13. Um, and if I am not mistaken, then that would result uh, in a 3.13% um, pay and incre increase in pay uh, for the superintendent. Um, and that would actually be effective back to July 1 of this year. Um, so, and there were a few reasons that, um, you know, we didn't get this done over the summer, um, but we, Mike and I agreed we'd wait till we got school open and then school opening had its bumps. And so, um, you know, we, we decided that we wanted to work some of those things out as a priority and that we would, you know, obviously we'll get to this, which we, which we did. But, um, so finally, and I know I've thrown a lot at the committee tonight, uh, the final thing that I'd like to um, put out there to the committee, um, and Mike and I have had a conversation about this, um, is extending his contract. Um, you know, I think it would be good for the system with all of the changes that we've been dealing with, with um, all of the changes yet to come, with the plans that we're putting in place with DESE, which got delayed. Again, that hasn't even fully been um, brought to the committee for approval. I mean, that, you know, we're a year and a half at least behind on that process of where we would have been. Um, so I think it's important that we make sure that we're going to have adequate time for all of that to be implemented. Um, so again, I, I'd like to see us uh, offer an extension. Um, we, t we talked about two years, um, so I, I just thought I'd throw that out there at the committee as well. Any questions, thoughts? This was a six year, right? Yes. Right. No, five, Aldo? We did a one, an interim, and five. 
Oh, it was one as an interim and then five? Okay, so when is your, you're up in 2025? Yes. Yeah, right, right. So this, if we did do offer the extension, uh, that would take him through 2027. Um, and then whoever is sitting in these seats in 2027 can decide what happens from there. <laughs> so any questions on the evaluation from the committee? All right. Um, I'd certainly like to thank a few people, all of the committee members who participated in the evaluation. Uh, that's not something that you uh, whip through in 15 minutes. As all of you know, that is a time-consuming process. It requires a lot of thoughtful consideration, review of evidence. Um, and so I appreciate everybody that, that took the time to, uh, to do that. Um, and, um, you know, I also want to thank um, Carrie Kopp and Dr. Connors for their involvement, their role in that. Um, they really helped me out a lot. Um, you know, I get to stand in front of the camera and put the presentation up, but behind the scenes, um, they really had a lot to do, a, a big role in, in the whole evaluation process and how, in the tool that we used and also the presentation that I just gave. So uh, thank you again, Dr. Connors and, and Carrie. Um, and then the superintendent, I want to thank you again. You put all that evidence together and... Um, you know, and you've done a, a spectacular job, as, as I think the committee all agree, based on that evaluation. Um, you know, you are always, and I mean always, available. <laughs> I mean, last week I sent you a text at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you didn't answer at 1, but you still answered at like 4.30, which... <laughs> um, so, and, and we've had conversations that have started at six o'clock in the morning, you know, we're, um, so, um, you know, I, I just want people to know that, that this guy's always on the job. Um, I don't think he ever stops. <laughs> um, so, uh, but at any rate, um, so I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, I, just, uh, I thank you, um, you know, for a great evaluation, but, um, you know, people really have to understand that if it wasn't for the school committee support, um, you could not just do this job as superintendent. Um, several superintendents that I started with three years ago in my cohort have dropped out, and a lot of them have left their jobs after two years, and most of it was because of the relationships they had with their local school committee, and it just didn't go well, especially during a pandemic. So, um, you know, it's, it's the relationship that um, I have with you, and you push me to make sure I do what's right for kids and staff. And you always make decisions and make sure that I'm making decisions in the best interest of kids. So without that relationship and the support of the committee, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to do my job well at all. Um, and, I, you know, I want to thank my team, my executive team, uh, and the staff of the Brockton Public Schools and the support of the families who are all great. But, you know, a lot of um, the money that we're enjoying this year and in years to come has been the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears of... Superintendent Smith before me and members of this committee that spent a ton of time um, on, you know, on the, um, at the State House. All of you have done that. Um, you rallied the parents. You um, filed lawsuits. You spent hours, um, all of you, um, really making sure that the state funded us right. It's been a long battle. And I'm fortunate that even though I started in a pandemic hit, I'm fortunate to be able to, you know, reap the benefits of having a budget that for the next, at least for the next five to six years, will be beneficial to the, the students of Brockton. And I know that um, Kathy before me didn't have that benefit, but her work and the work of this committee um, is the reason why, you know, we'll have the money going forward um, to really support our students. So, again, it, it's not just one person. You can't do this job. It's an impossible job. Anyway, <laughs> and but it's 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 a job that if you don't have the support of the committee, who are you, you are my bosses, and um, and rightfully so, you you press me to make the decisions in the best interests of kids, in the best interests of the parents that you represent, and the students you represent. So um, I thank you for that because um, that's why Brockton is always pushing to be great, and it's because of this committee of what you put into it and people forget the hours that you all put in for very very little money um 
and it's not you don't do it obviously for the money because <laughs> it's probably about <laughs> no. a dollar an hour but you know the the meetings you put in the phone calls you take the times that we talk on the phone uh, people have to realize that you know it's a long this is a this is a, a lot of work for you as well all of you and um, you know it's much appreciated your support and everything you do for the Brockton Public Schools is in it so I couldn't do any of this without you and the support of my executive teams and the great people that work in the Brockton Public Schools I mean you know, I've been here this is my 29th year and there's just great people here uh, families students staff and it's just a great place to be and I would be humbled if I was able to get a two-year extension because there's no other place I'd rather work and I'd say you know I've said I'll, I'll be here as long you as long as you'll have me here <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all right thank you uh, mr. Minicello I think it's very rare that communities these days in the Commonwealth of Mass have a superintendent that um, uh, is a long-serving long-term superintendent uh, that the community overwhelmingly supports and who overwhelm overwhelmingly supports the community um, I think it would be a good thing for the city of Brockton and the, and the, and the residents and the, and the school community to extend the contract because it shows stability and that's what a lot of the districts don't have there's always you don't know how rare it is to have a, 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 a school committee and a superintendent to have a relationship that I think we all have uh, you know with our superintendent it's very rare um, you know I, I've been this is this is my fifth superintendent okay you know when I first came on there was you know Buzz Nimbrakow and then it was you know Matt Malone and then and then John Jerome was the uh, filled in you know and then it was Kathy Smith and and now it's Mike Thomas and um, you know I, I would say Kathy and Mike you know have roots here and oh, as well as John Jerome those three you know are in-house connected to the community um, they were they 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 loved Brockton and Brockton you know really cared about them and I I think I have no hesitation to extend for two years because again I think it's beneficial for the students stability uh, at the top ranks of, of any school district um, um, is a good thing and uh, I, I just think that you know uh, I think Michael as we all know Michael put gives it his all uh, the community you know all people in the community of all you know. Uh, uh, of all races, of all ethnicities, everyone likes Mike. You know, it's a, isn't that commercial? Everyone likes Mike, right? so, something like that. Something like but that. Um, you know, and, and Mike's likes and Mike likes them and us. You know, so I'm overwhelming in, in support of that. I, I think that stability, long-term stability for a school system like Hitless and Brockton, is rare. You know, and I still talk to Kathy Smith, and she tells me what's going on out there. You know, the reason why Kathy Smith is employed right now hopping around school district to school district is because uh, it's rare to find a long-term superintendent that the, com that the communities out there feel comfortable with. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard, a hard goal to, 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 re to really find that one person that's going to spend a ton of time. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I would vote in favor of it. Mayor yeah, I mean, I, I do. <clears throat> Mike and I talk, I don't know how many times a day, um, good times and bad times. So I want to just echo the sentiments of what, of what Tom just said. I mean, first of all, the stability, right? But there's also so many projects in the queue right now. And to have a leader that gets it, and a lot of my quotes are up there. I don't know who picked them, but thank you for picking them. Um, you know, he, he, he isn't just someone that grew up in Brockton and is a graduate of Brockton High, but he cut his teeth in BPS. And so, from a political standpoint, the state and DESE is going to look at, okay, the seven elected school committees and the mayor, um, you know, have confidence in the leader. And, you know, that, that speaks volumes. It does, from a political standpoint, on a Commonwealth-wide perspective. The fact that other municipalities, 351 in the Commonwealth, are really trying to find someone like Mike, and we have that person, we don't want to lose him, number one. And number two, he, he does get it because I have had frank conversations with him and he takes suggestions and criticisms awfully well, but he also is a team player. And so from my perspective, if, if he's ready, willing, and able to stay an additional two years, 
I say we lock them in. I mean, that's just my thoughts. But I think it makes sense for BPS, makes sense for the school committee, but it truly makes sense for the city. Thank you. Any other? Mr. Sullivan? for the last year and the last year before that. I'm glad Mike Thomas was in that seat. I don't know what we would have done if somebody didn't know what to do during this set. This has been the worst year ever for the year before. He brought us to it, smelling like a rose. And I congratulate him for that. Nice job, Mike. Thank you. All right, if there's, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rodriguez. One of the contracts over in 2025, and what? How does that tie us up? Let's say the next, because none of us are promised to be sitting on this board in two years, four years, six years. How does that tie us into? Because if he's under contract, what if that school committee that comes in later on decides to go in a different direction? So there is language in the contract that does allow the school committee to dismiss a superintendent. Um, obviously, it's got to be for cause, and you know, there's got to be reasons for that, I, I would imagine. Um, you know, but um, yeah, Mr. Minicello, if you want to jump in. If the school committee does not care for a superintendent, um, they are going to separate. Like if, 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 the, if the school committee is, is embattled, embattled with a superintendent, um, there will be a meeting of the minds that it's in the best interest of the district. If, every, if the overwhelming majority want, do not get along with the superintendent, they, they will definitely work things out that they go in their own direction. Because it's happened already. Uh, it happened <laughs> once already. Mr. Sullivan can talk about that, the details. But um, so, so, so you don't have to worry about it, not like, like long-term payout because it, it would be a short-term payout if there's ever some, a, 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 a school committee that can't get along with the superintendents. They're not going to want to listen to the school committee, all, all of them chirping in their in his ear or her ear, uh, and, and be disgruntled and, and, and bad mouthing each other. Um, what I think, why? So why would you extend the contract? I'm going to tell you why. Because having a superintendent that that everyone gets along with long term is a good thing for a community. Um, because when his contract is close to being up. There may be other communities out there that are going to say to him, hey, you know, uh, come, come over to, to Bridgewater Raynham or come over to somewhere closer to, uh, come down to Plymouth, you know, right near your house in Halifax or whatever. You really don't want to lose, lose a good superintendent because it is hard to find them. I'm telling you right now, I've been involved in three searches and it's a pain in the butt. And, and, and again, there's, there's so much instability with superintendents. So, so, so I think it's a long-term good thing for a community to have someone that they have confidence in. I, I hear what you're saying, Tony, that, well, you know, we, we might not be around or what have you. I mean, I think, I think that I don't, have a, I don't have a problem with my conscience recommending Michael for a long-term contract or extending it because I think that he, he'll, he's going to be good for the community. I think Michael's balanced. I think he's very open to um, the community, listen, I mean, you know, listens to people. He's not, he's not, uh, let me tell you something. The first superintendent I worked with, Buzz Nimbrakow, it was his way or the highway, and he didn't care if you were on the school committee or not. Matt Malone, he was, he, he, he had a temper that you would not, he, he had, he, 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 he was an interesting person. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, it was it was it was a very interesting person. I, I, <laughs> so so, uh, long term, I think someone balanced like Michael, Mike, I I, I think it's a good thing for the for the community. But again, if if you get a school committee, you know, five years down the road, and, and they don't care for Mike, and it's the overwhelming majority, and Mike's not going to want to care for them if they, they they they're making his life miserable, they're gonna they're gonna go their separate ways. They'll be. They'll, they'll be, you know, it's, they're not going to. They're not going to uh, uh, offer any long-term buyouts because there'll be jobs available. You, you, you can't say, "Oh, well, we now have to pay Mike Thomas five years because we got him under contract." No, you're not, because because there's there's a duty that he, he has to basically 
uh, you know, minimize you know the damages if there's if there's opportunity available for him. And believe me, if, 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 if he walked out the door today, there'd be plenty of opportunity for this guy. You know, he can go down the Cape or wherever he wants. I mean, seriously, I mean, and get a job. So, so in, in a way, I know you're concerned about locking in a future school committee, but they're really not locked in because. If there's cause, if there, if no one gets along with, with the superintendent, they're going, they're both going their separate ways. Trust me. The other thing, too, is and it's happened here in Brockton. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Look at the history of. Oh, sorry. So yeah, Tony. Sorry. It's it's the same thing as saying, okay, we extend an extra two years. I mean, it's 2021, 2025, four years from now. Um, there's nothing that's a guarantee that he can stay here next year because he can still be offered jobs anywhere. So contracts are made to be broken, and we all know that. So I, I, my, I just think it's um, nothing against you, Mike. It's members. just, you know, there's a, a lot of years ahead of us, you know, for us to make that decision. I would like to see, like, the incoming school committee members weigh on that. I mean, we have only, what, two more meetings left? You know, for them to make that assessment as well. You know, I wouldn't want to be that number that's coming in that, you know, you're locked in. You know, they have to make an assessment. They're going to do an evaluation as well. I just think it's a, it's a huge, there's years ahead of us. Anything can happen for us to actually jump an extra two years. That's my opinion on that, and I would love if this could be tabled and discussed with the incoming committee members that, that are coming in. Well, I mean, that comes down to somebody making a motion one way or the other, either to approve the uh, two-year extension or to table the discussion. Um, you know, I mean, it just comes down to a vote on that. But the other thing I'll add, um, again, I think to Mr. Minicello's point about stability for the district, um, which is a big part of it for me, is having stability in our leadership in the district um, and... Um, and the reality is, you know, Tom mentioned at the end, he can get the same money in a much smaller district because I've looked at the numbers. Um, you know, so I think that's a good point that you made of potentially being courted to go to another district. I'm not saying you would do that. Um, but again, a future com committee can still decide to part ways. But I, I think that um, it is an important move to show that there's going to be stability um, for the long term because there's been some rocky things that have happened the last two years that we've had to face as a district. Um, so personally I'm going to support it because again um, it's about um, you know it's about having long-term stability which I think is important right now um, for this district uh, given where we are and where we've been. So. Oh I'm sorry Mr. Sullivan. Oh. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Um, we'll do a hand vote. Do a, do a roll call. Oh, you want to do a roll call? Yeah. All right. Yes. No, he would have had, someone would have had to make a motion to table it. We would have taken an up or down vote um, on whether to table it or not. But we have a motion on the floor for an extension and seconded at this point, so we've got to put that to an up or down vote. Right, we can have further discussion on the motion, but at some point either the motion has to be withdrawn or we have to vote it up or down, so we can have some further discussion. I mean, uh, am I mistaken about that, Mayor? On parliamentary procedure, we have to. Yeah, under Robert's rules, we have to take this to a vote, and then if it fails, then obviously we could entertain a different motion. Um, all right, so, or unless it was withdrawn. Um, so, just to be fair about it, are you interested in withdrawing your motion? No. Are you interested in withdrawing your second? No. Okay. All right, so I'm going to call the roll. Um, Mr. Minicello? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Mendez? So are you abstaining? So, mm. Okay. Um, and D'Agostino is a yes. Mr. Rodriguez? No. And uh, Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mr. Sullivan? Yes. 
Okay. All right. So we have uh, and, and Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay. All right. So there was two no's and five yeses. Uh, motion carries. I thought, I thought there was one no and one abstention. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. One no. Thank you. One no, one abstention, and five, Correct. five we'll, in the yep. affirmative. So, all right. So that uh, that motion will go to the full. It's a recommendation of the full committee. So that's the other thing. That motion will go to the full committee to be discussed again. Um, so it's not that there is another. Uh, if someone wants to do a motion yeah. to the table, I think they can. Yeah, Correct. they can make that yep. motion at at the full committee, and that'll get an up or down, and then, you know, whatever happens from there. So, um, and I think we also need a motion on the evaluation, if I'm not, or a recommendation on the evaluation um, and the corresponding um, retroactive increase. Is that correct? Yep. So. Motion to um, adopt the recommendation of the school committee and the you have to say the results of the evaluation for a 3.13% increase paid retroactively to the do I have to say the date? What, what July date? 1. July 1st, 2021. Okay. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Minicello, seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Uh, I'll call the roll again on that. Um, Minicello? Yes. Mrs. Mendez? Yes. All right. I'm going to vote yes. Um, Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mayor Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Um, I think that's it. Do we have, we got the extension, we've got the evaluation, the raise, yeah, okay. All right, is there any other business to come before the superintendent contract subcommittee? All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn, seconded. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank